But fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. We're in for one crazy ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. You're in for one incredibly awesome and amazing ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Tonight we have with us Anthony Traumatano. Welcome to the show, Anthony. Thank you for having me, Josh. So, Anthony, being we talked about your racing career on the Facebook part of it. Let's start over. Let's talk about how it all began for you. Well, it started out when, well, my, pam, my family's been involved with racing forever. You know, my dad raced uh, Crate Modifieds, my uncle raced, and my family's been going to races ever since they existed. So I was born into it pretty much. When I was born, my dad was racing. So it was only a matter of time until I started out in quarter midgets, which I started out when I was about eight or nine years old, which was a little bit late, but started out in quarter midgets when I was eight or nine. I ran those for a couple of years, toured with the USAC National Tour. And then when I turned 15, I moved up to the crate modified division at New Egypt, started out getting approved by the state police to run in the state of New Jersey because you have to be 15. And then as I, as I ran those for a few years, and then now as I sit now, first year in the big modified division. Okay. So, Anthony, when you first started out your racing career, did you have um, a lot of success from the get-go, or did it take a little bit of learning to get there? You know, it started out a little rough, but we got there. And I specifically remember wanting to win the very last rookie race in quarter midgets, and they didn't tell us when it was. So I remember I got excited because I won like the last three and I kept asking them when it was going to be the last rookie race. So that was pretty fun. And we had good success early, but um, ever since we started, we've always been racing up against the best at ACO. There was the best of the best running quarter midgets. So I would say we were pretty successful considering the people we we're racing up against. Okay. So Anthony, um, let's talk. Okay. Now going into your racing career, you had a lot of success from the get-go. Then all the way through your quarter midget career, did you have a lot of success there too? Or I'd say we had a we had a lot of success. We didn't win every race and we didn't win every championship, but it was all a learning process. And plus, I did start later than most people because most kids start when they're five or six. I didn't start till I was eight or nine. So we were a little bit behind the eight ball. But I would say by our last couple of years, we were definitely one of the cars to beat at all the national tour dirt races. Okay, so Anthony, let's so you had a lot you you were the car to beat a lot of the national dirt races so that's pretty cool to say the least that i tell you you know you were a threat pretty much every time you hit the track so which is pretty cool so anthony um now okay now that you moved over you were in crate sportsman for a while right yep okay so was the learning curve moving over from crate sports to crate sportsman from from quarter midgets was that pretty tough learning curve or you know, I'd say it was less of a learning curve than a maturing curve because it takes a lot to race with these guys. And you're going from racing with your peers to racing against a lot of people that are older than you. And it takes a lot to earn their respect and, you know, gain the knowledge that they have over the years. Because most people you're running against have been doing this longer than you've been alive. So it's important to the biggest thing I found was just, you know, mind your P's and Q's, be respectful, but also show them that you're not afraid that you can get up there and race with them. But at the same time. Okay, so now you're in the big block cars now, right, Anthony, you said, right? Yeah, so we moved up to the modified division, and it's an open engine rule. So you can run a bunch of different configurations. You can run a big block, a small block, and you have to weigh different amounts based on those. So, yeah, it was a big jump this year, and it's been an adventurous start, I'll tell you that. So what kind of races do you have on your schedule for the, the big block modifieds now for this year? Well, we got a ton of races, and most of the races are going to be on our home track at New Egypt Speedway. We're going to try and run the best we can there, you know, run for points there if we can. Just try and get some lap time in. But we also want to hit some of the bigger races uh, for the Short Track Super Series and Bridgeport just to get that track time in and get some experience. So who are you looking forward to racing against in the, in the big block set of things? Well, I tell you what, there's a lot of guys that I'm going to get to race against that I have grown up watching and grown up admiring and grown up, you know, wanting them to win races. So just to name a few, it's like uh, Jimmy Horton, Billy Pouch Jr., Frank Cozy. A lot of these guys I've like grown up cheering for every week and now I get to race against them. So it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, Anthony, have you done any testing in your big block car yet? Well, we went we ran one practice session so far. 
And other than that, we've just been dodging rainstorms. This weekend, one race got canceled this weekend already. So we're hoping to hit another practice session this weekend. Okay. Okay. So have you, okay. Talking about your career, you're the number 13. So what's the story behind the 13 now? Well, when I was little, the first court image I ever got had the number 71 on it and I hated it. I wanted to get rid of it. It just didn't seem good to me. So I decided to go with the number that my dad had when he raced and his number was always 13. And the story behind that 13 is because my birthday is August 13. So he made his number 13 once I was born. So it just kind of stuck. And I like number 13. It's a cool number. Okay. Very cool. And you've, you've actually gained a lot of success with the number 13, which is really cool. So Anthony, what do you have for sponsors on your race car now? Oh, I got a lot of people that help us out. And some of the biggest ones are uh, Mancini Custom Homes. We got Landguard Title Service. We got Bob Worthington. He helps us out a ton. JC Mears, Bonlin Auto Electric. That's just to name a few of the people that help us out every week get to the track. Because it was a big uh, financial adventure moving up because these motors are not cheap. Oh, yeah. So all those people helped us out. And um, I can't thank them enough. So are you still looking for sponsors for your race? team anthony always looking for sponsors always looking for some marketing partners to you know get get their name out there now that we moved up all eyes are on us it's one of the biggest divisions in the northeast it's on flow racing all the time and you know it's a great way to get your business out there so if there's anybody out here going to be watching the racing show with me and anthony tramatano and you want to help him out reach out to anthony tramatano and his family because they'd appreciate the sponsorship on anthony's race car as he gets further into his racing career so anthony um Talking about the paint scheme of your race car now, it's always been green and white. What is the green and white all about? You know, ever since I was little, I was always a fan of Donnie Shots, and he always had, you know, the bright green Arctic Cat sprint car. Oh, yeah. And I've always been a fan of him. So as soon as I started in quarter midgets, after we got, you know, the first time we ever wrapped the car, I said, I want it to look like Donnie Shots's car. And that's, I've always had that same design ever since then. Okay. Alrighty. So have you had a chance to meet Donnie Schatz? Yeah, I've met him a few times at Williams Grove and some of the tracks around PA. So was he pretty decent to talk to? Yeah, he, it depends how good he was running, but I feel like that's all race car drivers. But I've yeah. talked to him a couple of times at Williams Grove and a couple of times here and there. Okay. So Anthony, um, now that you're getting ready to go in your big block car for the year, um, who do you have work on your race car? Me. <laughs> you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I do spend a lot of time on the car and um, I spend, I do a lot of the, all the maintenance, all the scaling parts. And my dad helps me quite a bit too, but he does more of the, you know, checking what bolts loose and, you know, checking what I messed up because, you know, he's got more experience than me, but I do 99% of the stuff I would say. If there's something I'm unsure about, I'll tell him. And he does most of the motor stuff too, because he has more knowledge about that. So who is the crew chief at the track for you then? Is that your dad or? Yep, my dad, the crew chief, the sponsor, the everything, you name it, that's my dad. And okay. my mom helps out too. She helps, you know, scrape the mud off the car, wax it up before every feature. And, you know, she does my helmet and everything for me. So when it comes to your race car, with the big block modifieds and stuff like that, how often do you guys go through a set of, set of tires? I, I just wanted to know that. All the time, especially with all that power, you're going through them quite a bit. And most of the top teams will put on brand new right sides to go out for the features. Okay, alrighty. So Anthony, um, do you have a racing nickname? No, I do not. Because my last name is not very easy to rhyme. Okay, alrighty. <laughs> And you know mine, mine's the full throttle rock star. Yep. So, yep. Yep. So, Anthony, um, are you getting ready? Are you going to come out with some new merchandise this year for your big jumper? I don't know. I'm hoping to, but these engines are expensive. So, we'll see. We're going to see. As so, we get what's, going. A, what's the big block engine cost nowadays? Well, the engine we have in our car, it's a small block, but it's an open small block. So, you can do whatever you want to it. The only thing you're not allowed to touch are the heads. The heads, you can do whatever valve springs you want and all that, but the heads have to be whatever they get. The benefit of that is you can weigh about 100 pounds less than a big block. So on a small track like we race at, that's a benefit. And really, you're looking at about $30,000 for one of those engines. Ooh. Well, that's pretty spendy. That is definitely pretty spendy. Yes, it is. So, Anthony, um, when you're at the racetrack, who are some of your friends at the racetrack, quarter midget-wise, uh, modified-wise? Well, I tell you what, Paul Mancini is one of the ones that I've been racing with for a few years. And there's a couple other ones that, 
you know, I've grown up racing against that are moving up to modifieds this year, moving up to crates. So I'm good helping them out. You know, you got David Malozar, Nick Steve, and a couple other guys that, you know, I've raced with forever and we've all kind of moved up together. Okay. So um, is David pretty excited about getting into a, a big car? Yeah, he is. He's definitely ready for it. And he practiced down at Georgetown with us and he seemed great. Okay. So Anthony, um, now when you get ready to get in the race car to go out for your hot laps, heat race feature, what helps get you psyched up to get into that car to get you focused? You know, it's actually the opposite for me. I like to, you know, focus my mentality down, you know, take deep breaths, you know, get focused, calm myself down. Cause usually I'm pretty excited to go racing, but I see more. You know, it's more about finesse on the small tracks that I drive on, like New Egypt. So I usually try and, you know, calm myself down, you know, focus, almost do the Lightning McQueen ritual, you know, before he goes out for the big race. Calm down, focus, get my mind straight. So do you go out and walk the track to kind of figure out which is the best line to race on the track? Yeah, usually I'm up there quite a bit looking at the track, what they do during intermission, what they do between heat races. You know, a lot of other drivers do the same, and we talk about, you know, what line we think is going to be good, where the holes are going to be, what the fast groove is going to be, how quick the track will wear out. Okay, so Anthony, um, now, okay, when you're at the racetrack and you're getting hungry to eat something, what, what is your favorite thing to eat at the track? Oh, whatever my mom cooks. She cooks amazing food, and she always brings us something good, so whether it's pulled pork walking tacos spaghetti meatballs whatever it oh is boy. oh I know. boy nothing nothing food. nothing like home cooking right right hey it works great so anthony um being you um racing big black cars do you still help out with like different quarter midget teams you know like mentoring the bigger kids the kids coming up yeah i actually help out sometimes at the new egypt speedway they have a quarter midget track there now and i've been helping out there I'll go help them with their arriving drives. I actually flagged once last year for okay. them. So whenever they need help, I help them out. Okay. So Anthony, um, now, okay. Uh, what do you like to do away from the racetrack, Anthony? Oh, uh, school. Not that I like it, but that's all I get a chance to do anymore. School and work on the race car. I go so to you, Rowan University for mechanical uh, engineering. So mechanical I'm pretty engineer. Busy. So what do you yep. want to do with your mechanical engineering degree after you get done? So I want to make my race car faster. That's what I want to do. Okay. I like that. I like that. So Anthony, um, were you a pretty good high school student, right? Yeah, not bad. I got through pretty nicely. Okay. So Anthony, um, when it comes to, um, you know, doing work, homework and working on the cars, um, is there anybody you'd like to thank for being a part of your racing team and, and just kind of getting you to where you are right now? Well, I'll tell you what, I couldn't do it without my parents because, you know, ever since I've been little, they've always supported me 100%, you know, whether they're teaching me, helping me, you know, my dad's tightening the last few bolts while I get my homework done, you know, my mom's helping me with this, helping me with that, you know, she's sweeping the trailer, you know, I can't thank them enough. Without them, I wouldn't be where I am. So, Anthony, do you have any crazy stories about your racing career, like, hey, this kind of mechanical issue happened or this type of wreck happened that you'd like to share with us? Oh, well, there's, I wouldn't say it was a good story, but last year at Sealands Grove, I was, uh, there was about 60 cars in our division. It was one of the opening races at Sealands Grove Speedway in Pennsylvania for the crates. And um, we were running good. I was out by, I want to say, maybe a, a straightaway out on the whole field of a heat race. And of course, I started on the pole, which was good because, you know, there wasn't a lot of chances to get in. They only took about three cars from the heat races. And with Two laps to go. One of the lap cars I was coming up on lost an engine going into the corner. Ooh. I hit the oil and I slid Ooh. into the cushion rut and it ripped one of my tires clean off. Oh, not good. Not yeah, so good at all. We went from being in guaranteed to having to start 15th in a concy, which the track was just a mess that day. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even know what happened too because I started trying to drive away. I thought I just, you know, messed up or something. Then one of the photographers came over and he's like, you're missing your tire. I look over and there's a whole puddle of trail of oil going into the corner. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not yeah, so good. That was not a fun experience, but no. Hey. Yeah. So Anthony, who is your racing hero? Your favorite race career that you look up to? Oh, well, I'd say the person that I most look up to is probably Billy Pouch Jr. Cause he's, he's helped us out quite a bit every once in a while here and there. And, you know, I, I can't, I've always watched him since I've been little. I've been a big fan of him whenever. And he, you know, he always talks to me if I have questions and I've always been a fan of his driving style. He's always 
fast, clean, and smooth, and that's how I tend to drive too. So I ho- I hope to be like him one day and win as much as he does. Okay. So Anthony, um, what is your five year plan with racing? Uh, win some races. That's all it is. We just want to win some races because this division is highly competitive and you're racing against teams that have, you know, quadruple the budget we do. So if we can just win some races and we're probably staying in this division for quite a bit, you know, because this is where I want to learn. And, you know, this is where all the big boys play. So if we can win some races, you know, maybe get a top five in points, I'd be more than happy. How about your 10 year plan with the racing? What does that look like? Oh, I couldn't even tell you. That's all opportunities. That's I'm hoping maybe, you know, I can get lucky and maybe get a couple rides here and there. And, you know, I wouldn't mind trying out a NASCAR truck or, you know, something like that okay. at some point, okay. but I got a long way to go before I get there. So next January, are you talking about running down in Florida for the race down there in, in Florida? Well, we hope so. We had plans to go down there this January. It didn't quite work out. So but we're hoping next January, you know, we'll be able to get down there. Okay. I would like to see you guys actually race at the Bristol uh, Dirt Nationals. That'd be pretty cool to have you guys race there too. Yeah, I know. They have they have big block modified run there, except we don't have a big block engine yet. So once we okay. get a big block engine, we'll definitely consider that. I'd love to try it. Alrighty. Alrighty. So Anthony, do you have anything out there you want to say to the kids to help get them in a race car? Well, I'll tell you this. It, the first time I did it, I was scared to death. And every day I, you know, I get in a race car again. I regret being scared the first time I did it because it's the best thing you can do. It's one of the greatest things you can be involved in. And, you know, just go out there and have fun. You know, it's if the car is going to win, the car is going to win. If the car isn't, just do the best you can with it and don't wreck it. And that was the one thing that my dad taught me, too, is, you know, if you don't have the winning car, you might not go to the front. And that's OK. Everybody's going to have their night. But if your car is good. You won't have to push anybody out of the way, do anything crazy. The car will work its way to the front by itself. So, Anthony, do you guys have any rituals or superstitions going into race day, like things that you won't do or things that you will do? Well, I, hey, every time we try it, they never work. So I would say no. No? Okay. All righty. Thank you very much, Anthony, for being on the racing show with me today, talking to us about your racing career. Um, I, sometime in May, I'd like to have you on here again and kind of give us an update as to what's going on, you know, after you started yeah. your racing season. Sounds good. So, Thanks for having so, me. So, yes. So, Anthony, do you have anything out there you want to say to my racing fans at all about my racing show, the kids to get them to come to my racing show at all? Yeah, get on here and get your name out there because you never know who's watching and any chance is a good chance.